presentation of TFNN. The Tom O'Brien Show is produced every business day. Tom takes your phone calls toll-free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. This is awesome. Uh, come on, parlez-vous. We're going over to Paris. What's happening? Hey, Tom. It's Adam from Paris. How are you, sir? I'm doing great, Adam. Yourself? That's good. Long time no talk. I appreciate everything you've done for me and my family over the years. So, well, we uh, appreciate you. Rob, one problem with us. Yeah, yeah, yeah sir. Uh, I've done the gold reports and all the softwares and all your books and read generational thank you. you are, seminars, thank so you so much. Appreciate it. Yes, sir. Now, Tom O'Brien. Welcome to the show, folks. This is Jacob Shoup filling in for Tom O'Brien. I will be with you for the rest of the week. Uh, you send me an email at jacob at tfnn.com. The number is 877-927-6648. If you want to talk to me, that's all right with me. Taking a look at the markets right now, we're kind of down a little bit. Uh, ES Mini down about 1.29%, Russell down about 2%, and Q down 1.39%, YM down about 0.89%. The gold contract, we're trading at 1960, uh, really 1962. Uh, so some pretty fantastic movement for it today um, on some pretty substantial volume as well. So that's good for all the gold holders out there. I was reading an article that Costco, I guess they sell little gold bars, and uh, they've been selling out of them um, pretty quickly. If you have, I guess, the more expensive Costco card, you get 2% back on purchases. So like basically getting this gold for kind of a 2% uh, discount, which is pretty neat. Silver trading at $22.96. Taking a look, not the same amount of, uh, not the exact same amount of motion as gold has, but on some pretty significant volume on the upside anyway. Looking at a $25 price target for gold. Uh, looking at copper, $358 on the contract. And of course, crude oil futures trading at $87.29. And this has really been what we've been seeing for the past uh, month, essentially, right? In between this 81 to the 90 area. And everything is uh, still moving along with the uh, conflicts around the world. Uh, there is some talk that. America might lift some of the embargoes on Venezuelan oil since they are promising to have a democratic election the next cycle. Uh, if that's true, that will alleviate some of the pressure uh, in the gold market, excuse me, in the, uh, in the oil market. And that'll just be interesting from a uh, geopolitical stance as well. Uh, bonds trading down a little bit today. Tesla down about 5%. We can look a little bit more into that as we're going. Um, I still, the, the people who love Tesla are so dedicated to it that I, I do think we'll see this as an, a buying opportunity. Um, they are very well influenced online by um, all the other, you know, holders of Tesla and, and, and probably um, some more institutional investors online as well. Still dynamics, we're trading down pretty hard today. Uh, we're at 102.99, reaching that $100 uh, dollar target. We've been trading in, the, like I've said, 100 and 110, this range. Uh, for quite a while, as you can see, cracked down out of it with volume, came back up to test that high again of the 110, um, and then we're on the way back down to 100, so we'll take a look to see how that goes in the coming days. Uh, the dollar is staying um, pretty consistent here and consolidating about this 106.59 area. Um, obviously, we have some traversal a little bit down, but we're not even getting close to cracking um, 105 um, and really, you know, 104. We, we want it to move down so the rest of the market can do a bit better. But again, you know, regarding gold and this kind of traditional um, kind of inverse relation these two have, um, gold still doing pretty well today. QQQ is trading 363.55. Google 139.35. Meta at 318.22. Disney back down at 84.83. And Apple at 176.19. We'll take a look. We were talking a little bit yesterday um, about NVIDIA. Um, their stock was losing some ground because the U.S. had essentially closed a loophole um, in selling some of their chips to China. What had happened is they essentially, I guess, rebranded the chips, uh, were able to sell them to China. This was a loophole uh, that they found last November um, when this kind of, like, quote-unquote, chip war started. Um, that's now closing, and that's a pretty large driver of revenue um, for NVIDIA. The reason why the U.S. government's doing that is because it might indirectly 
um, benefit the Chinese uh, military. ASML is responsible for the lithography uh, devices that make chips, um, and they basically kind of like hold the key to all of this. Now, they did beat expectations, uh, but their forecast was not so great. Um, so they earned the equivalent of about five twenty-three a share on sales of seven dollars and twenty-six. Uh, excuse me, seven point two six billion in the September quarter. ASML reports financial results, obviously in euros. Uh, the analysts uh, pulled ASML earnings about four ninety-two a share on sales of seven point nineteen billion in the years prior. Um, obviously, has gone up. It was four twenty a share on sales five point six six billion. Um, so essentially, their CEO kind of came out and said. Uh, that they might have flat sales next year. Uh, this is a quote from him, his name is Peter Venink. Uh, the semiconductor industry is uh, currently working through the bottom of the chip cycle and our customers expect the inflection point to be visible by the end of this year. Uh, customers continue to be uncertain about the shape of the demand recovery in the industry, uh, wherefore, um, uh, excuse me, we therefore expect uh, 2024 to be a transition year. So we can take a look here, losing about um, 5%. Uh, he added, based on our current perspective, we take a more conservative view and expect a revenue number similar to 2023. Uh, but we also look at 2024 as an important year to prepare for the significant growth that we expect for 2025. So on the short term, he's seeing a basically, like I said, a bit of a flattening. Um, but ASML really does uh, just dominate in the lithography market, uh, which will be uh, you know, necessary for chip development going forward. Second here. We'll take a look to, I want to talk a little bit about Target um, because they've done, you know, they've lost a lot this year. Uh, and the question is, you know, kind of why, right? So we look at, you know, Walmart has gone up quite a bit. Um, I, I think the, basically the consumer is getting tightened a little bit. Um, there's a lot, Target also centers itself around a lot of discretionary spending. And, you know, what that means is when you go in, there's a lot of excess stuff to buy. Target is really good when the middle class or you know, whatever can be considered the middle class is doing well too. Um, when it's not obviously these cheaper options such as Walmart come about, and Walmart's been really good about kind of consolidating its market lines, um, or excuse me, its product lines, um, and, and uh, they've just been able to hold out uh, a lot better. Of course, a lot of people were trying to say that Target going down uh, had to do with some politics earlier on in the year. Um, now, you know, probably that had maybe a small amount to do on it. But this is uh, kind of a, a larger issue overall uh, with Target and the type of demographic uh, that they seek to kind of cater to um, are getting tightened a little bit. So on the long term, I still think Target is going to kind of be down here. I mean, we're coming up from like, you know, this is a year to date. If we go to the yearly, let's see here. So, I mean, you know, we're trading at, at least in February 181 and we are down at 110 right now. That's a pretty significant uh, downward movement. Folks, stay tuned. Uh, we'll be right back. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30 plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously when you sign up for the tiger forex report you also gain instant access to teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted forex strategies and fundamentals what is behind the tiger forex report for all the details and to start your 30-day tiger forex report subscription today visit the front page of tfnn.com tfnn educating investors are you ready to take your trading to the next level? 
Introducing Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, your key to successful active trading. Tom O'Brien, renowned for his expertise in the financial markets, has designed Market Insights to be your daily guide to profitable trades. Tom publishes his daily Market Insights newsletter every market day before the market open, along with updates when warranted. Stay ahead of the game with Tom's real-time analysis and trade recommendations delivered straight to your inbox. Whether you're a seasoned trader or just starting out, Market Insights provides the edge you need to navigate the markets with confidence. Ready to join the ranks of successful traders? Head over to TFNN.com and subscribe to Market Insights today. Don't miss out on this opportunity to supercharge your trading results. Market Insights comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee for all new subscribers, so you have nothing to risk. Don't miss out on this opportunity to revolutionize your trading game. Head over to TFNN.com right now to join the thousands of traders who have already experienced the power of Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, firsthand. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. Take a look at the NVIDIA's chart right here. Um, so we're going to talk a little bit about what their plan is now after some of the restrictions have tightened. Starting trading with China. These guys are trading at 419 from the high of 507.66. Um, you had a kind of a sell off right here and then a nice little creep back up. And uh, I, I personally think it might settle around some of this area, maybe a little bit less as well. Um, essentially, what's happening? Well, first, let's start off with Foxconn, right? So Foxconn is um, basically the chip supplier for Apple. OK. Foxconn CEO came out and said that um, they're, they're not really going to be able to compete on the cutting edge chips, cutting edge chips. At this point, it uh, would acquire way too much investment, and there's no guarantee um, that they will uh, you know, be able to, to really compete at that kind of level. So what they're going to do is kind of diversify out and create some more specialty chips, uh, which I think is just kind of an interesting business pivot, and I think it's very uh, prudent as well. So the reason why I bring up NVIDIA with this is, well, NVIDIA is now trying to expand um, with Foxconn in order to create what they're calling AI factories. Okay. And so the whole idea behind this is really going to be to see if they can beat out Tesla on uh, self-driving, okay? So it's teaming up with Foxconn. It's also known as Hanhai Precision Industry. That's in Taiwan. Uh, the expanded partnership is a sign of new markets where NVIDIA's chips can be used. This is obviously very positive. Uh, Foxconn, obviously known for manufacturing iPhones, but it's going to broaden its business. Uh, and then it's really focusing on the production of electrical vehicles with autonomous driving capabilities. Um, the CEO, Jensen Huang, had previously said the automotive industry is about a $300 billion opportunity uh, for the chip maker, which would be fantastic, obviously. Uh, again, they're competing with Tesla. And now I still I get nervous because I think Tesla has so much more data compared to everyone else. And I've said this before multiple times on the show that the way Tesla can really benefit from this. Excuse me, I took out my earphone here. Uh, that Tesla can really benefit from this is kind of selling that data to where they don't even have to compete um, you know, with other uh, car companies. I think that might be something we see in the future. And, uh, you know, that would be, you know, the equivalent to striking oil or something like that. Anyways, um, I don't think that is in the cards yet for, for Tesla. Obviously, NVIDIA was down about 3% and it closed about 4.7% uh, uh, yesterday. Um, and so it'll be interesting to see how this expands out and to see if NVIDIA can really get a good uh, grip hold in this. We're talking about the autonomous driving vehicles, and this is some other woes kind of with GM. 
And so they have this plan. Let's look here. This is what's called cruise, okay? And cruise is the concept, again, of these kind of smaller self-driving cars. So let's take a look at this here, right? It hit two people. And so they're trying to take basically a, uh, a look into basically what happened. Uh, cruise is a subsidiary of General Motors, um, so that, you know, that might have impact on them going forward. Uh, this, this news article reads that the federal uh, auto safety regulators are investigating crews uh, following pedestrian injuries that involve the company's driverless vehicles. Uh, the investigation is to determine whether crews automated driving systems exercise appropriate caution around pedestrians in the roadway. Uh, the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration opened up the probe into crews. Uh, on Monday, the probe was prompted by two reports involving pedestrian injuries and cruise vehicles in recent months. Uh, the agency also cited two other incidents it identified through videos posted to public websites, according to the filing. Uh, one incident on October 2nd involved a situation where a pedestrian was thrown by another vehicle into the path of a driverless cruise vehicle. Uh, that incident, of course, uh, I guess apparently matched a hit and run. And there was another one as well where essentially someone walked out in front of the car while uh, the car had the right of way, uh, hit, it at a, hit them at a very slow pace. That person was hospitalized. Still, I think if we probably, this is what's going to be so interesting going forward and in, in, in how legislators try to kind of deal with this situation, right? So the, the idea essentially is, and, and really the numbers prove it, is that these autonomous vehicles are far more effective at avoiding crashes and hitting people than just normal people are. Um, and so it gets to the point is like when you start adding these in, who takes liability for certain things? Um, how is that dealt with? I'm sure there will probably be some standardized insurance contract uh, that keeps going on with them. Uh, but I've seen videos as well online of a lot of these self-autonomous, or excuse me, yeah, self-autonomous, these autonomous cars uh, driving in cities, and they actually are very safe. Even when they have the right of way and someone cuts them off or, you know, whatever, they're very good at stopping where, um, you know, you can watch some situations where you would see a, uh, you know, a uh, piloted vehicle essentially actually ended up hitting them. So... I, um, I do think that this might be a solution for really congested cities going forward. Um, obviously, the idea of like not necessarily owning your autonomous car and another company um, kind of renting it out to you, you know, isn't always kind of desirable. But um, I think we'll see more of these kind of come and it might be, you know, safer roads for kind of everyone involved, um, which I might, uh, you know, might be kind of interesting. So. We'll take a look here. We're talking a little bit um, on Monday uh, about some of these accounts being frozen in crypto, so some crypto wallets. Bitcoin's doing very well right now uh, compared to the rest of the market. Um, obviously, they're starting uh, to release some of these kind of crypto ETFs, so that might be uh, something to look into. We were talking about how a lot of these wallets can be linked uh, to terrorist groups and how if any of these kind of coins and the blockchain algorithms want to maintain staying power, they're going to have to start doing this themselves. Um, so taking a look at this is from Coindesk. Uh, this is Israel has frozen about 100 Binance accounts over suspected Hamas links. Uh, authorities have requested information on an additional 200 crypto accounts, most of which are held on Binance. Uh, since Hamas stormed into Israel 10 days ago, uh, triggering a war, okay, that's certain words, Binance confirmed to Coindesk last week uh, that it was working with Israeli authorities to block terror financing. And this is a thing too, and I say it all the time, but if if you're getting into cryptocurrency because you don't like how the international financial institutions work, you don't go through a company like Binance. You know, you don't go through these exchanges because uh, these exchanges are controlled. Um, y you know, you don't have anonymity, which everyone thinks you do when you're when you're kind of buying these uh, cryptocurrencies and using them. If they're coming out of Binance or kind of any other exchange, um, it's very easily uh, trackable. So, and of course, this has been a major issue um, in Ukraine as well. Uh, I think Bitcoin is trading at something like $28,000 right now uh, for a single Bitcoin. I was actually talking with one of my buddies and um, he does tattoos. He's a tattoo artist. Uh, he does this for a living. And he was telling me, he's been tattooing, I think, for about 11 years now. And he was telling me when he first started out, this guy tried to pay him in like two Bitcoin. It must have been further than that as well when it was cheap. But uh, he was like, nah, man. Like, he's like, I don't want to do anything with that. And obviously now if he had held it, 
at the top, he would have had a quite a nice bit of change right there. It's kind of funny stories. I think all young people have a story like this. I mean, I remember being in like eighth grade and I had a friend who I think he, he must have been a sophomore in high school or something like that. But we would play video games with each other. And he was always on this new kind of like tech stuff all the time. Right. And uh, he was like, you guys got to buy Bitcoin. And I think it was something like $100 for a Bitcoin or something around there. And my, um, I asked my dad, I'm like, I had some money saved up. I'm like, can I buy that? And he's like, no, no. And I ended up investing in like a Vanguard ETF smart, but uh, not as smart as Bitcoin would have, be, uh, would have been. Of course, less risky to buy the ETFs. Folks, stay tuned. We'll be right back. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFM. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. Right, give me a second to pull up this article. Uh I like got I got distracted on the break. I don't know what happened. I was just reading stuff in the den. Um, I wanted to share this with you, but I'm trying to find it now. We'll get there. Ah, okay, here we are. This is just some standard news. We talk a little bit about, um, you know, general stuff that goes on in like government, international kind of thing. This is this is going to apply a little bit. Um, essentially to kind of corporate defaults in the way that the U.S. debt situation kind of looks. And this is 
kind of a look at it from the IMF, right, the International Monetary Fund, okay? So we're taking a look at some of these key facts here. The U.S.'s $33 trillion debt pile is reflecting a, quote, unsustainable fiscal policy, the IMF said. The government has already racked up about $1.5 trillion deficit in the first 11 months of 2023. And this is a quote from the IMF, under, under, excuse me, under unchanged policies, debt dynamics in the U.S. are very unfavorable. Now, of course, the U.S. does something called monetizing the debt, which has been very um, powerful for them. And uh, U.S. debt is used kind of as a uh, kind of vehicle of exchange nearly for a lot of other uh, countries. So the U.S. debt situation is looking increasingly precarious. Uh, this is coming from the International Monetary Fund. Um, the U.S. fiscal situation is most worrying among all the world countries. IMS Research Director Pierre Oliver Gorinchas said in a press briefing on Tuesday, uh, that's largely due to the rapid pace of government spending, with the U.S. already ra having racked about $1.5 trillion deficit in the first 11 months of the fiscal year, according to a recent Brookings Institute uh, estimate. An interview with Bloomberg on Wednesday, IMF Fiscal Affairs uh, Director said the U.S. deficits are elevated and look to be persistent. Under unchanged policies, debt dynamics in the U.S. are very unfavorable. A perpetuation of current policies entails an unsustainable fiscal path. But I just, I think everyone has said this for so long, right? And, and the question is, like, what really would be, like, the breaking point to where the U.S. can't, you know, pay that? And obviously, they can consistently be funded and everything. And, you know, this is the idea of this kind of, like, mixed market kind of deal that they run in this, this new kind of monetary theory. Um, but it's just interesting seeing it on such like, a large level uh, from the IMF. And so I thought it was interesting to kind of talk about. I know some of the guys in the den also kind of talk about uh, U.S. debt and, you know, what that kind of pretends for the future as well. Um, some news from Microsoft. So I was talking a little bit how they got blocked. It's probably a few months ago, maybe in June or something. Uh, and the U.K. had blocked them uh, from essentially buying Activision. Okay, and Activision develops a lot of video games. They're very well known. Um, for you know, Call of Duty, I think Activision Blizzard uh, makes like World of Warcraft and all these kind of other games. Obviously, the big money maker for Activision Blizzard is really going to be Call of Duty. They have these microtransactions in them, uh, so you just buy the game for a premium, anyways. Probably about like eighty bucks, I think it is now. I haven't played that game in a very long time, but it's still very popular. Uh, and then you buy items in the game, uh, sometimes for uh, pretty insane prices, honestly. So. This merge has completed, uh, excuse me, at least they finalized it. This is $69 billion purchase of Activision Blizzard, which is massive. And again, whenever you, you know, Microsoft isn't in the business of trying to make video games. You know, they don't really care about that. It's just the immense cash flow uh, from a lot of these kind of game companies. I mean, we look at um, games also like Roblox, right? Which Roblox has almost developed its own you know, economic system, right? I think they call them Robux or something like this. Um, and that's how you buy stuff in the game as well. This is more stuff for your characters, um, different, you know, games within the game as a whole. Roblox can best be kind of viewed, I would suppose, as something like the metaverse. And you can go in and kind of, you know, make different worlds in it and people can interact. And uh, I mean, my little cousin plays it. Um, my you know, friends I have who have daughters or sons about that age, they play this game uh, religiously. And I think the cryptocurrency Ripple is about to make a deal uh, with Rob uh, Roblox uh, in order to supply um, an algorithm for their uh, for their currency in the game. So it's this is this is really huge, you know, and I I think the as these kids grow up, I think they're calling them Gen Alpha. Right. I don't think they're going to stop playing these games kind of like my generation stopped playing them, right? Like, I haven't played video games in a long time. I still have some friends who still do it, uh, but it's less, and then you get down to Gen X, or excuse me, Gen Z, and uh, a higher percentage of them still plays video games into adulthood, and then I think what we'll see with Gen Alpha, a higher percentage still. And um, these kind of, you know, interactive and virtual environments um, persist for so long. And uh, I, I think that'll become like a greater... I, I suppose, kind of part of the world. And I say, I think, I think Meta and Facebook and Zuckerberg were a little bit ahead of their time with everything that they were doing. Um, I had a friend who works for a decentralized autonomous organization, and uh, he, his company has a pretty big NFT and uh, some cryptocurrency as well. And he wrote this white paper essentially about, and this was years ago he had written this, um, 
to some investors and they were trying to do something very similar uh, to what the metaverse was trying to do uh, from Facebook. And the idea is what he was likening it to is like, you know, you imagine, you know, our parents and grandparents went out with their bosses and colleagues to a golfing game. He's like, well, the generations in the future will meet up on, you know, some kind of metaverse concept like Roblox or, you know, Minecraft or whatever, right? Obviously, it's not going to be those exact games, but the concept's still there. And I think that's what Zuckerberg was trying to get at as well. Um, Meta had also just released, um, there's a, oh, how do you call them, podcast with a um, very famous podcaster. I can't remember his name right now, um, but Zuckerberg and this guy had um, the entire podcast inside of the metaverse with these new AI models um, that Zuckerberg and his team have created. And they are, I mean, impeccable, right? And they have somehow kind of beat that uncanny valley uh, that a lot of humans enter, excuse me, that a lot of humans experience uh, when, when robots or kind of AI try to look too much like humans. Uh, they've beaten that. Lex Friedman is the podcaster's name. You guys got to look that up. I'll, I'll try to put it in the den, but it's, it's pretty fascinating. Anyways, let's take a step back here. Let's go back to Microsoft. Trading about 3.30 right now. They've just finalized a $69 billion purchase of Call of Duty. Uh, the new deal will stop Microsoft from locking up competition. Uh, in cloud gaming as the market takes off, uh, preserving competitive prices and services for UK cloud gaming customers, uh, which is a big issue they were having uh, with the UK's Competition and Markets Authority. Under the renegotiated terms, uh, French gaming company Ubisoft, which is another massive company that is uh, pretty infamous for their microtransactions, but they just make so much money from it, um, they will acquire the rights to Activision's cloud gaming content for 15 years ensuring that it will remain available on non-Windows operating systems. So obviously that's pretty big, and you know, the EU has always had, um, obviously it's through the UK, um, but they've always had decent you know, kind of antitrust laws going on there. Uh, the deal makes Microsoft the largest video game company in the world by revenue behind Sony and Tencent. Tencent, of course, uh, being China's uh, massive video game company. Tencent is so weird because what they basically put root kits on your computer uh, for anti-cheat, and that gets down to the lowest operating level. Well, it's the lowest operating level. It's called level zero, but it has the most authority um, in the entire computer system. They, they, they basically download antivirus into that. It's very dangerous, but this is on so many computers throughout the world. So anyways, folks, stay tuned. We'll be right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. 
An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no cash or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. I'm O'Brien. Welcome back, folks. Let's take a look here. Um, talk about mortgages. Mortgage demand has fallen to the lowest level since 1995, as interest rates near 8%. That's a pretty intense number. Applications for a mortgage to purchase a home dropped 6% week to week and were 21% lower than the same week one year ago. Total application volume fell about 6.9% compared with the previous week, according to the Mortgage Bankers Association's seasonally adjusted index. The average contract interest rate for 30 year fixed rate mortgages uh, with conforming loan balances, which is 726,200 or less, uh, increased to 7.7% from 7.67% and points decreased from 0.71 to 0.75, including the origination fee for loans with a 20% down payment. Uh, that is the highest rate since November 2000. Uh, the rate was 6.94% during the same week one year ago. Applications for a mortgage to purchase a home dropped 6% week to week and were 21% lower than the same week one year ago. And applications to refinance a home uh, loan fell 10% uh, for the week and were 12% lower than a year ago. Both purchase and refinance applications declined, driven by larger drops for conventional applications. Okay, also, it's just so expensive to begin with. And I think they're doing a... Uh, where is this? I got to find this. It's like a extraordinarily long loan, like a 47-year mortgage. Oh, yeah, here we go. Now, this is from Canada, okay? But, you know, this will come out. We'll get some weird stuff like this in the U.S. 47-year mortgage, they're out. Even longer ones could be coming. Again, this is coming out of Canada, so keep this in mind. Uh, but it's just showing how everything's going kind of in, you know, North America. Banking regulators said about $250 billion worth of home loans are either currently or soon to be negatively amortized. Excuse me, amortized. Um, Canada's top banking regulator will soon implement new guidelines for new mortgage. Okay, anyways, you don't need to go through it because it's the Canadians. But the point is, is that uh, things are getting expensive now. You know, obviously, stuff is a lot more expensive in Canada, homes uh, being one of those things. Um, but this is what I've been just so nervous of going forward. I think that the cost to build is higher. I think the cost to manufacture is going to be higher going forward, right? Um, we spoke about a little while ago when the Toyota CEO said that he could see new cars uh, being a baseline of about $50,000. And um, you're, we're essentially just going to kind of be in these long-term, like, I mean, decades-long loans obviously the mortgages are already there but i'm even talking car loans and other things as well to where you're like effectively not even really gonna ever pay off this car you're gonna be paying so much in the home as well you're paying so much in interest uh, that you're not paying towards like the principal at all and um i think it just gets uh, pretty sketchy right the white house is doing something about this um they've put money into let me see if i can find it here okay yeah, so it's the White House has announced new actions in home ownership, and this is from WhiteHouse.gov. Uh, essentially talking about how it's it's very difficult right now for Americans to get homes, especially um, younger Americans. Of course, it's a massive foundation uh, for moving forward in life, primary source of wealth. Um, so the Treasury Department released data demonstrating how uh, the current president's investing in America agenda is supporting existing homeowners and helping more Americans access affordable home ownership. 
through over 12 billion in support. The America, American Rescue Plan's Homeowner Assistance Fund has assisted nearly 400,000 homeowners at risk. Okay, of course, a lot of this is also just kind of an advertisement for the current administration, but the idea is that there is a lot of, you know, there is some effort at least on the part of our government uh, to kind of ameliorate some of these issues. Um, I don't see a time in the future where a lot of people younger than me um, are ever gonna get a house, you know? Um, I don't think one, people make enough money uh, especially the younger people, like I'm talking like early 20s and stuff like that. I don't think credit is on a lot of people's minds, which is a shame, um, but that's just the case. And uh, I, I just, I don't, I think it's going to be, if nothing's done is what I'm saying, I think it'll be a lot harder uh, for people, um, you know, to compete one with like larger private equity groups um, who are buying some of these homes and uh, two, just kind of people moving out uh, from out of the uh, state or out of the uh, country coming in here and, and buying those. I, I think these are all things that contribute to a very uh, kind of brutal situation for young people in buying a home. And it is important, right? Like, I mean, it isn't like it, when I think about it, right, as a young guy, like I feel like that's a big step for me, you know, going forward. And then, you know, all the other things follow like family and stuff like that. And, um, you know, that's what we were sold when we were younger. We we're always told like, you know, you go to college, you do these things, you get a good degree, and uh, you're you're good to go, but it's just it's not as it's not as clean cut as that uh, was kind of made out to be, and that is uh, particularly hard for a lot of uh, younger people as well. Um, however, the uh, Mortgage Banker Association uh, did say that they do expect an increase. I'm trying to pull that up for you right now. Um, expect an increase in mortgage originations next year. And I want to get those exact numbers for you because I think it's uh, interesting. Give me a moment. Here we go. Yeah, so they're suggesting that mortgage originations will surge about 20%. It says 19% here in 2024. And they say as a recession will force down rates. Okay, like, but the recession thing is what's getting at me too. We'll read this and I won't put so much of my input in on it. But, you know, I think what, we're already in October of this year. You had so many analysts last year saying, oh, there's, we're going to 100% be in a recession in October of 2023. We're not necessarily here yet. Now, I think some people might uh, be feeling something very akin to that, and maybe not the entire population is feeling uh, the effects of a recession. Um, but, uh, you know, consumer spending is still kind of strong. Um, employment still is pretty strong. Um, so anyways, let's we'll take a look at this a little more. Uh, the Mortgage Bankers Association is saying that the housing demand will rebound from this year's strained level after mild recession pulls down today's high mortgage rates. Uh, mortgage originations uh, or the process leading to a home buyer loan are estimated to reach 5.2 million uh, by loan count next year in the MBA's housing market forecast release on Sunday. Obviously, there's a 9 percent jump from the 4.4 million loans predicted for the entirety of 2023. Uh, by another measure, 2024 origination volume is predicted to surge again 19 percent to 1.94 trillion against a 1.64 trillion expected uh, for this year. I don't know what they're seeing the mortgage rates going down to. I still think we're in an environment where the Fed may still raise rates. Um, I think we're seeing that kind of sentiment also reflected in, um, you know, like the TLT and some of the other kind of uh, indexes for, for bonds. Um, you know, obviously they're selling off pretty hard. I don't know. I don't know where they're kind of getting that from. And, you know, if a recession doesn't come around and rates stay high for a while, I mean, yeah, they might lower the mortgage by some percentage just to get, you know, a few more people in there, but I, I don't think it'll be substantial. And, you know, 8%, I mean, a 7% mortgage is still high. 6%, I feel like, is still kind of high, right? Um, so, I don't know. Anyways, this says lower, uh, lower rates obviously uh, should help boost home buyer demand and increase the inventory of existing homes because people sell them out, uh, thereby supporting purchase origination volume in 2024. Not only would that incentivize home buyers to return, but it would also help add housing supplies. Current owners would be more willing to sell their house, of course. It's basic economics. So anyways, that's kind of my little uh, kind of reading on what's going on with the mortgage rates. Um, and obviously that impacts a lot of younger folks as well. Um, so I think it's uh, important to talk about. Folks, stay tuned. We'll be right back for a short segment and then we'll send you off.
Are you ready to take your trading to the next level? Introducing Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, your key to successful active trading. Tom O'Brien, renowned for his expertise in the financial markets, has designed Market Insights to be your daily guide to profitable trades. Tom publishes his daily Market Insights newsletter every market day before the market open, along with updates when warranted. Stay ahead of the game with Tom's real-time analysis and trade recommendations delivered straight to your inbox. Whether you're a seasoned trader or just starting out, Market Insights provides the edge you need to navigate the markets with confidence. Ready to join the ranks of successful traders? Head over to TFNN.com and subscribe to Market Insights today. Don't miss out on this opportunity to supercharge your trading results. Market Insights comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee for all new subscribers, so you have nothing to risk. Don't miss out on this opportunity to revolutionize your trading game. Head over to TFNN.com right now to join the thousands of traders who have already experienced the power of Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, firsthand. TFNN. Educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. This is Jacob Shoup filling in for Tom O'Brien with the S-Mini down about 1.43%, RTY down about 2.24%. NQs down by 1.52, YM down 1.03, and the gold contract is staying steady at uh, 1964, which is fantastic for all the gold people. So, one little story here. We talk a little bit about the student loans in the past, uh, that payments are kind of resuming now. So apparently more than 400,000 student loan borrowers had wrong monthly payments, and uh, it was payments higher than they probably should have been. Um, so let's take a look here. And again, the context for all of this is more than 28 million federal student loan borrowers returned uh, to repayment this month after the pandemic-related uh, pandemic uh, relief program put their monthly bills on pause for nearly four years. Now that the federal loan machinery has been set back into motion, hundreds of thousands of borrowers are discovering that their monthly payments had been miscalculated, often for higher amounts than they actually owed. The mistakes have come to light as more than 28 million federal student loan people started paying again the miscalculations have affected borrowers being transferred into the Biden administration's new income-driven repayment plan, which is SAVE, which bases borrowers' monthly payment amount on their income and family size. Uh, the Missouri Higher Education Loan Authority used the uh, 2022 poverty guidelines of 2023 to calculate the payments, which caused roughly 1% or 280,000 borrowers to be given modestly higher payment amounts than they should have under the new SAVE program. Uh, pretty interesting. It would be worth taking a look if you haven't already and you're paying student loans. Take a look here 
GM, we, we speak a lot about uh, the electric vehicles and all the different companies who are trying to get into it. Uh, GM is down about 2.72% today. They said on Tuesday it's delaying production of all electric vehicle trucks at the uh, Orion Assembly, which is in Detroit, and that will be done until about 2025. Uh, GM now plans to begin construction of its next generation EVs in Detroit in, uh, like I said, 2025. So, you know, that's kind of a big halt on some of these big plans that they were having. Folks, thank you so much for tuning in uh, today with me on this Wednesday. I'll be with you again Thursday and then Friday yet again. Tom will be back Monday. Remember, always email me when there's some questions. You just want to say hi, go right ahead. Folks, have a great rest of your evening, and I'll see you tomorrow. Tommy's on at 9 a.m. Eastern time tomorrow morning. Take care.